Hey, what's up guys? My name is Joe, um, and we have officially hit 1 million subscribers. You guys have officially made it possible for me to live a, a dream job and, and, and even a dream life. Um, and it's cliche, you know, we hear a lot of YouTubers saying stuff like this, but I get why they say it because it, it's a massive deal. I'm just so thankful to have such a great community of people who are looking to better themselves and also better those around them. There, there's the physical point of the channel and that's teaching guys how to look good, teaching guys how to style their hair. But more than that, through YouTube, uh, through the Bloom On Company, it's always been important to me to have a community that supports each other and, and builds each other up. See, we're not, we're not here just to look good um, in order to grow our egos. Maybe some of you are. But really, we're here to look good in order to step forth confidently and, uh, and, 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 and achieve our dreams. Being a team and, and having someone's back and knowing that someone has your back, that's really what's gonna get you far in life. And honestly, that's, that's the reason why I'm here. That's, what, that's what's gotten me this far to this day. So thank you guys so much for sticking around. If you're new, I hope that you choose to stay. And uh, with that said, we've got a nice long Q&A session. All of these questions are from you guys, uh, either through Instagram or Facebook. And let's go ahead and start out with Instagram. So I put out this post um, asking you guys to ask me questions. I have gotten almost a thousand responses since yesterday. All right, I've officially scrolled to the top. Obviously, I'm not gonna answer all of them, but we'll go through this and answer as many as we possibly can. How's the married life? It's been going really, really well. I got married July 23rd to July, August, September, October, November. Uh, coming up on four months ago. Honestly, guys, finding the right person, um, it's been, it's, it's amazing. I know a lot of people in this day and age are kind of, um, have a pessimistic outlook towards marriage. Uh, I'm, I am not one of those guys. I, I value family a lot. Um, and I am super, super glad that I did marry Dinty. Um, it's just been a great time. I'm kind of monotone and just like, just like this all the time. Just, I just sail through life kind of, on a plain level. Dinty, she's very excited, she's very up, she's very down, she's very happy, she's very sad. She's like this all the time and that just adds for an extremely exciting element in my life. Uh, without her, um, things would be a lot more boring than they are, <laughs> let's just say. So yes, officially getting married has been, um, I think the, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me and it's simply because it's come down to the right person. By the way, I kind of find it hard to open up on personal stuff, so if, if it looks like I'm struggling here a little bit, I'm trying my best. Here's a good one. How did you get into the Blue Mon business? So about two years ago, uh, I was in university and I was making hair videos, but not, not super serious, not like now. And I got an email from Ben, who is now my business partner, but back then I didn't know who he was. He just cold emailed me. He said, have you ever thought about starting a hair product company? And I was like, well, I've thought about it, but A, I'm in university, so I don't have a lot of time. And also, I don't know that much about business, so it's not something that I put you know, serious thought into. And uh, he basically responded saying, well, uh, maybe I can help you out with that. And that really was the start to our um, adventure with what we have now. I never knew Ben before he e emailed me. He basically emailed me. I was like, sure, let's give it a shot. Next thing you know, I flew out to Vancouver, Canada. That's where he's from. Uh, I didn't know anyone in Canada. I've never been there before. I stayed with his family for two months and we built the company from the ground up, just um, working pretty much every day for a solid two months, getting this uh, hair product company going. And that's really how, um, how the company, the hair product company started. So yeah, pretty cool, very random. Ben has a completely different set of skills to me. He's very good on, on the business entrepreneurial front. He's kind of just a born entrepreneur. I'm more on the media, obviously filming side, but obviously put all of my, um, my knowledge around hair products and, and developing the kind of products that we make today. So very good team together. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's how it started. Do you play video games now or as a kid? I play video games more as a kid, but I just uh, recently picked up the Nintendo Switch and Mario, Super Mario Odyssey just came out and I've been playing that nonstop. Excellent Mario game, uh, finished it the other day. Highly recommend checking it out. What is your favorite color? Aqua. Would you do anything different besides hair videos? Maybe an unboxing in your channel, something like that. Um, so I'm already, as you have probably noticed, trying to branch out a little bit from just hair. If I could do anything, I would love to get probably into tech, um, do like tech videos and whatnot, because I love tech as well. However, there's already a lot of really good YouTubers in that space. 
for now, I'm happy, you know, I'm doing, I'm loving what I'm doing right now. So obviously I'm gonna keep doing hair videos, branching out into a bit more style and whatnot. Uh, but if I could do something else, I would probably choose to do tech. What was in your mind when you started a YouTube channel? I literally had zero plan. I had no, I didn't know, I thought I was only gonna make one video actually. Um, I remember back in the day when I first uploaded my first video, um, I, I just got into hair products and, and hairstyles. It's the first time that I've really started to take care of my hair. So I was watching all of these other YouTubers at the time. Uh, Slick Hair TV was going really strong. Uh, Jordan O'Brien was at like, or The Gentleman's Cove was at like 5,000 subscribers. Dre Drexler had a couple thousand and, and I was watching these guys, you know, and that they were kind of the inspiration for me to start. I found Hans DeFuco because again, at the time, Hans DeFuco had a really strong uh, online presence on YouTube. Uh, went to their website and I saw that they had just released Hans DeFuco Claymation, so brand new. Uh, there was no reviews, no one had talked about it on YouTube, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy this product and throw up a review of Hans DeFuco Claymation and be the first person to review it. Um, just for fun. And you can still see if you go back to my very first video on this channel, it is a Hans de Fuco Claymation review. Very first video and that's really where I started from. So I posted that, checked in a day later, I had about 20 views. Hans de Fuco found that video and featured it on their Facebook page um, and that brought up the views to about a thousand and I was like, oh my gosh, I have a thousand people who have watched my video. That was a massive deal for me, I remember. What was even more amazing though is Hans de Fuco actually invited to fly me out to San Francisco to shoot some e exclusive um, content with them in San Francisco. Keep in mind at this point, I was a nobody. I had, I had maybe five subscribers. I had one or two videos. Hans de Fuco just paid for everything. They paid for my flight, they paid for my hotel. And that was a really amazing experience for me. After that, Slick Hair TV saw that I did some work with Hans de Fuco. Slick Hair TV used to work with Hans de Fuco, so then Slick Hair invited me to make a couple videos for their channel. If you go back a couple years ago, I've made like four or five videos that are on Slick Hair TV. And obviously that was some massive promotion for me. That's really the kickstart into the channel that we have today. Um, at least a couple years ago, that was the kickstart. And that's really how it started. I mean, I was in ext an extremely fortunate position to have a channel as big as Slick Hair TV interested in having me make some content for them, you know, back then. Um, that was pretty much the breakthrough and that, that I'm still so thankful to Slick Hair TV and I'm, I'm even still thankful to Hans DeFuco for, you know, the initial uh, relationship that we had, even though that's kind of deteri deteriorated today. Uh, it, it used to be pretty good. Have you ever considered being a professional model? Um, no, I haven't. It doesn't interest me at all. Um, living the lifestyle of a model seems like it could be exciting. You get to go all over the place. You have your pictures thrown up everywhere. You get this beautiful Photoshop work, bringing out all those muscles. But I've seen the life that models live and then they're constantly on the go. They barely ever have a say over how they want to make any content. They barely have any influence over anything that they're involved in. And not to mention there's, there, there's a lot of pretentious folk in the modeling industry, and uh, I just don't really click with that kind of people. So let's just say I am much happier making YouTube videos than um, trying to become a professional model. What are the things you do when you're not filming? The answer to this question would have been much more interesting back when I used to live in Africa. We used to go dirt biking. Um, uh, I had my own dirt back bike. My dad had one. My brother had one. And we used to just go off on adventures all over the place because in Tanzania, dirt roads are just everywhere. So pretty much, everything was was like a playground um <clears throat> not so exciting anymore <laughs> i watch tv uh sit on this couch very nice comfortable couch i'm a massive food junkie so i like to go to pretty much every restaurant possible and since i live in manchester there are a lot of restaurants i easily spend more money on food than i do on my clothes um just because i love the experience, a good dining experience, there's nothing that can beat that in my opinion. Do you miss living in South Africa and what do you prefer between South Africa and the UK? Love from South Africa. Um, so a lot of people are confused about this. I've never actually lived in South Africa. I was born in South Africa, but we were literally there for like 10 days. And um, the reason why is because the country we were living in at the time didn't have like a decent hospital. So flew to South Africa, I was born and then we left. I did, however, spend, I think, 15 years of my life in Africa. Um, the majority was in Kenya and Tanzania. Kenya for eight years, Tanzania for four years. 
Um, and I graduated from high school in Tanzania. I graduated from a British system high school in Tanzania, so that's why I came to the UK to a, a British university. And I gotta say, as, as much as I have loved my African adventures, I have so many memories. You're just so free to do pretty much whatever you want. I mean, like, there's no, no silly rules and, and laws in place and whatnot. You're just, you just do whatever you want. That said, I am a person who likes convenience and living in a first world country is just, it's just convenient. I'm hungry, I want, say, what do I want? Say a pizza. I, it's a three minute walk away to the store right next door. I buy a pizza, come back here, put it in the oven, boom, I got a pizza. I want a burrito, which, yeah, probably, I do actually want one right now. Easy enough. Uh, order it online, I get it delivered to my door. Like for those of you who live in a first world country and have never been to a third world country, you don't realize how good you, how good you have it. Honestly, uh, I, I love the convenience factor of a first world country. And uh, therefore, as much as I have, I love Africa and I would, I would love to return for like visiting and holiday and whatnot, and whatnot um, uh, I really like living in the UK or the US for that matter, but right now I'm in the UK. Talk about your elementary and high school life. Oh, here we go. Back into the past, into the, into the dark days. I absolutely hated school. The day I graduated from high school is the day that my life was like just improved a hundred percent. I had pretty serious ADD as a kid and, and I still have ADD to this day, but it's a little bit more controlled. Um, and if there was if there was something I wasn't interested in, which was pretty much every uh, every single subject in, in, in school, I was unable to just pay attention. I could not retain information that I was not interested in. It was just not happening for me. It's kind of funny because even though I, I wasn't technically a, a great student in the sense of like, I wouldn't really be paying attention. I'd be off doing my own thing, but I was always a friendly person and, and my teachers got along with me. So I was in this weird spot where like, they didn't like that I didn't pay attention, but they also like didn't dislike me as well. And when it came to friends, I had plenty of friends. I wasn't like, you know, sitting by myself or whatever. I had I had a lot of friends in high school, um, but just the education system drove me insane. And I'm just <laughs> so happy not to be in school anymore. Pretty much everything that I do today, you know, YouTube, my knowledge about cameras, lighting, how to edit videos, um, uh, hair products, all of that stuff. None of it came from my high school education. I, I, I use, I can't think of any skills really that I've taken from high school that I, that I use to this day. That said, in my final two years of high school, I did take a business uh, course in high school and I think that was probably my favorite subject and most practical. I could see how that applied to real life and that's what I need. I need to see how I can use this in my everyday life. If I'm not gonna use it in my life, it goes in one ear, straight out the other. How long have you been working on YouTube? This month, actually, in November, this is my fourth year. How many children do you wanna have? This is a topic that I have to tread lightly on. Like I already mentioned earlier, I'm a family kind of guy. Um, I think I'd like to have two or three kids eventually. But if we had a couple little mini-me's running around one day, I think that would be pretty cool. So this one comes from Jarl, who is a fellow YouTuber, also has an amazing Instagram account. I recommend you guys uh, giving him a follow. He said, Joseph, you've been working hard, buddy. Question, how do you feel about having 1 million people actually clicking subscribe because they love what you do and want to support you? And how do you feel in life generally right now? I wish you and the Bluemon team all the best. Really nice comment, thanks. Thanks, Jarl. Um, it's an extremely, surreal feeling. I'm just happy that I've got some stuff to say that other people find helpful, you know? I didn't, throughout my whole life, I've never really been in a position where where people look to me for answers. Because like I said, with the whole education system, no one ever came to me to figure out how to solve a math problem or or remind someone of some historical event. I was never that guy. I was never the guy someone came to for answers. And 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 now I am. So the fact that you guys have put me in this position today is honestly the most amazing thing for me. <clears throat> and I thank you very much. This says, uh, what has been your most awkward encounter meeting a fan? So a couple years ago when I had about 40 or 50,000 subscribers, I had never been recognized in, in person before and I was walking through a mall 
and uh, I walked into probably, um, I think it was an American Eagle shop or something like that. And one of the guys working there recognized me and he just started hyperventilating and he couldn't breathe. And I didn't know what was going on. I didn't realize that he, that he recognized me first. And so I was like, he, but he was looking at me and freaking out. So I was like, what, what is actually going on right now? Took a little bit of time. I clocked on that he recognized me and that just, that didn't help the situation at all because I didn't know how to respond. I was just like, oh, hi, nice to, nice to meet you. He eventually calmed down. Uh, I think I signed something, a piece of paper or something that he gave me. And that was the, the first time someone had ever recognized me and also the most intense experience of someone recognizing me. Ever since then, I got recognized every now and again, but people are, are pretty pretty chill with it. They're just like, oh, you, you're that guy from YouTube? I'm like, yeah, I am. They're like, oh, hey, like, how you doing? And I'm like, pretty good, how about you? You know, like a normal kind of interaction, but nothing has ever happened like that first experience. Uh, and that, I'll never forget that. Seriously, we still have the are you gay questions. Look, I'm a, I'm a married man now, okay? Someday, someday y'all will learn. With that said, let's go ahead and switch on over to Facebook. All right, we're checking out Facebook now. We won't do too many, we'll just do a few. Uh, I think this has been going on for quite a while. Hey Joe, big fan of your work. And speaking of work, what would you like to do slash what would you probably be doing job-wise if YouTube and the company didn't work out? Thank you uh, in advance and keep up the great work. Um, no idea specifically what I would be doing, but it would be in the media industry in one way or another. Honestly, now that I've had YouTube as a job, it would be really hard for me to transition into something else simply because I have full control over what I make and I really value and like that. That said, I'm sure I could work out work somewhere else. I know it would be in media in, in one way or another. Um, I'd probably like to have a media company if I had the money. Um, so then I can still, you know, kind of keep track of, or, or be very involved with the content that's being created because that's quite important to me. All of these questions are hair. I'm not answering any hair questions today. Here's another good one. How and where did you and Dinty meet? So obviously Dinty, the person who I'm now married to, but we met in university. So she was, uh, she is actually the first person who I spoke to uh, on my first day of university. I um, <clears throat> I had some problems with my visa because I'm a, an American, so I, I arrived at university two weeks late. Went to my first class. After that class ended, I had no idea where to go. Uh, so I was kind of just standing around looking lost because everyone went in loads of different directions. Dinty came up to me and was like, do you know where you're going? I was like, nope. And she was like, all right, follow me. That's how I met Dinty. Um, and then her last name is Andrew before we got married. My last name is Andrews with an S and uh, classes are divided by um, alphabetical order with your last name. So Dinty and I shared every single class together um, <clears throat> from there on out. So we became really good friends. Obviously things escalated from there. We are now married couple. But yeah, kind of cool that she was the first person who I met. How old are you? 23 right now. Oh, that's all of them. I mean, it's not all, I skipped all the hair ones. <laughs> There's not a lot of non-hair related uh, questions on Facebook because they didn't specify. Um, I think we'll probably just end it there. Oh man. That's the end of our 1 million subscriber Q&A special. Thank you guys to everyone who submitted a question. I uh, hope that you learned some interesting stuff about me that I don't normally share. Obviously, since we talk so much about hair and fashion and whatnot, I don't spend a lot of time talking about myself, so it, it was a good time for me. Hope that you enjoyed it as well. Um, thank you guys for watching, and uh, here's to two million. Yeah. See you guys next time. I don't know how to do this. Ah.